Thanks for the call. 458 Talk is the number. Good morning, caller. This is Patriots Lament. Who's this? Hey, this is Roger. Roger, what's on your mind today? Well, um, I was listening to you guys talk about uh, uh, going a little bit further west or whatever. You know, I I just came from a little bit further north outside of the furrow where my land is. And um, I didn't want to move an hour away from Fairbanks, but I also don't want to permanently rent my land. I want, you know, it's been been my dream since I was young to actually own my land. And then I come here to Fairbanks to try to buy some land, and I realize you cannot own land here. Nobody in this borough owns land. And I wanted to own my land, so I moved an hour away from town. And, uh, you know, it's like kind of like Ayn Rand put it in uh, in Atlas Shrugged. She said, uh, you know, kind of going back to quitting her job, she, she said she would... Uh, treat it kind of like losing a leg you know getting your leg amputated she just uh she'll go on after that and uh you know see what happens you know it's a big step but it's you know it's got to happen for your survival and uh and uh you got to deal with it from there but um i don't i don't have any uh any uh well, isn't, isn't, isn't that property tax just the, the price to pay for the privilege of living in the borough and, <laughs> and the, the services that you get? You know, well, well you, you actually, you could make that argument if you signed a contract with the borough when you moved here, right? But, yeah. but you don't. And, and even if you did, they breach their contract whenever they change the laws, right? Because if you change the law, you have to have a, 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 a new contract and there's, there's steps for that. Both parties have to agree. You have offer and acceptance. And you have none of that with the borough. You just have uh, uh, the so-called social contract, which is just a way of saying that it's not a valid contract in any court of law. Yeah, I, I kind of went back to that on my la- last uh, uh, Saturday when you guys were on. I, I kind of touched on that. You know, it's like unentered into contracts. You don't agree to these rules, and you still have to do it just because it's a... Uh, uh, democratically elected. There's a gun uh, behind the rule. That's why you have to agree to it. Yeah, and if you don't, if you don't agree to it, you just got to do it anyway because, in the end, they will put you in jail or kill you. And yeah, it's exactly. And, uh, Try not paying your taxes. What's going to happen to yeah. you? Yeah, and it's a, and it's a, such a small amount. It could be a very small amount, and uh, it's still worth killing you for. Yeah, but, if you resist uh, if you resist a parking ticket sufficiently, if you don't pay and they escalate and you don't go to court and and you and you resist being arrested, ultimately they will kill you. And how how's it different from Russia or old Germany? You know, and uh, different flag. I mean, it, it's not it's not that you didn't pay a parking ticket; it's that you're bucking them, and yep. they want to make an example of you. You know. And, the, uh, the the people trying to make an example of you speak American English, that's the difference. Going all the way back to the very first thing we talked about this uh, this morning where they shut down those little girls for having a lemonade stand down there in Georgia. Yeah, that is ridiculous. The it, 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 well, actually, I, on one of the stories, I read a comment below, and it was a gal from in Germany, and she said, wow, you Americans are absolutely lost your mind. I'm so glad <laughs> that we're free here in Germany. We oh, appreciate God, what you did crazy. three generations ago, but now... We can barely even call you a friend because you're freaks. And uh, I wanted to also uh, respond to uh, Randy that um, he's he seems to think that anarchy is just everybody running and screaming and shooting their guns at everybody else, you know. And uh, you see anarchy every day when there's not a police officer present. If there's not a police officer present... It's it's a small uh, example of anarchy. It's everyone doing the right thing because if they're not doing the right thing, it's not like there's going to be a police officer to to arrest them right now. It's because I have a gun on my hip, and you're not going to assault me or assault people around me because I will defend myself and the people around me. Yeah, and, and, and even if even if you know you don't have the gun on your hip, it's to people. When you go to Fred Meyer, it's to your benefit, you know, not to steal and rob from the people there and all that, right? Social interaction is is what the market creates, and so it's to everybody's advantage in the long term to do that. And it's it's only the 
institution of the state that actually creates all these short-term incentives, you know, gangs and and extreme poverty and all these things. Uh, they're created by you know unintended consequences from from state action, and that's what uh, that's what creates. Um, a society that that quote unquote you know needs all all the uh, controls and laws and police. Yeah, yeah. If you're walking through the if you're walking through the grocery store and an old lady with a walker falls down, is everybody just gonna step on her and kill her? No, they're gonna help her up, even if there's no government there to tell them to do that. They're gonna help that old lady up, and they're gonna they're gonna help her with her groceries and things like that. And that's anarchy. Whether yeah. you wanna understand it like that or not it's that's anarchy and it's not all bad yeah and and if the people right if the people in that you know anarchic society do, don't help her up well then the the police and leaders from that same um group of people would have the same attitude right you just have you'd have uh anti-social leaders and anti-social enforcers from anti-social public so um uh, exactly yeah you nailed it and, yeah. you know, I appreciate sure, yeah. it. I, this, Steve, I, I wanted to say one other thing about this very issue because I think that when you hear somebody like Randy criticizing the position of the anarchist, they do so by implying or it's in sometimes outright stating that anarchy is equated with violence. But in point of fact, government is violence, is it not? Democracies. Look at them. All of them. And every discussion should have a definition of terms. I mean, his definition of anarchy may be quite different than someone else's. Yeah, but the, Just like the fact of the matter is, is that democracies, yeah, mass murder, of force. every type. There's killed quite a few people. Yeah, over the course of the 20th century, if you look at the amount of uh, private murders versus public murders, it's not even close. There were over 100 million public murders by governments in war in the 20th century. It's. I mean, it, it just pales in comparison to uh, what you know petty, misguided individuals will do on their own when they have the backing of a state. Do you think there'd be less murder under anarchy? Uh, well, the government doesn't count it killing people as murder, so they would say that that it would be the same. So you're saying when our government went into the Philippines and killed over 100,000 Filipinos in the New American West, that that wasn't murder? I I think that was murder, but. Many people, probably the majority of people, would say that that was not murder because and, it was under if, it was under their flag. Even if they don't murder people, even outside of that argument, look at all the people that are in jail. If, in yeah. anarchy, you can't put people in jail. I mean, you can detain them. You can, you know, I, I've never actually lived that, but you know, there would not be so many people in jail. America has more people in jail than all the other countries than any other three countries am i right yeah yeah well we have more we have more we have uh like 50 percent more in jail than china which has a population four times as big and what do the what do the people in jail do well they learn how to become professional criminals from the other people in jail instead of instead of doing something to reform you know criminals or help them get back on their feet or, or get seek restitution from them for their crimes you institutionalize crime right it's like oh let's let's put them all together in a you know, in a cage, and, and they can only talk to each other, and they're completely isolated from the outside world, and that's how we'll prepare them to go back into the world. Look, look at the people that are in there for smoking marijuana, you know. There are so many great people. I know great people who smoke marijuana. I mean, and they are the most kind-hearted people. They do not deserve to be in jail. They don't deserve to have their families taken away. And and like you said, they might not be great people when they come out of out of jail for choosing on their own yeah. marijuana. Yeah, actually, uh, from that, I want to segue into uh, just a little blurb that I have. We're, uh, Fairbanks Campaign for Liberty is bringing up uh, Michael Bolden. He's the founder of the Tenth Amendment Center, and he's going to be speaking in Pioneer Park this Saturday at 7 p.m., and he's going to talk about things like federal nullification of marijuana laws, federal nullification of, of all these statutes and regulations. And uh, he's given a couple talks, you can look him up on YouTube, where he talks about um, effective nullification of federal prohibition of marijuana, for exactly for that purpose, for getting um, basically peaceful people out of prison. So if anybody wants to uh, to hear him speak, he's going to be talking about um, nullification, the Tenth Amendment, and where where our rights come from at uh, Pioneer Park at 7 p.m. next next Saturday, the 23rd. What was his name? Michael Bolden. Last Bolden. name is B-O-L-D-I-N. And the, and the place to be is? Pioneer Park at 7 p.m. 
And I, right, I'd thanks, check Jeff. out. Yeah, thank you. Check out his YouTube videos. There, he gives some really excellent talks and really, really makes people think. I wanted to end it here real quick, going back to the property. James Madison said that government is instituted to protect property. This is the end of government. That alone is a just government, which impartially secures to every man whatever is his own. What is not a just government, nor is it properly secure under it, where arbitrary restrictions, exemptions, and monopolies deny to part of its citizens the free use of their own faculties. We'll see you next week on Patriots for Men. Talk radio for the interior. 660 AM.